All right, guys, it's time for tonight's Frontier Post Game Reaction. We're going to head back up to Calgary and welcome Razor into the show. Razor, what a battle tonight. We know, you know we're going to ask you about Jake Ottinger. For a kid that started in the minors to what we just saw from him tonight, what can you say about the performance and what we just witnessed from the young netminder? Look, I've been here for a long time. I don't, I don't know that I've seen a better one. Uh, and obviously, if you feel gutted for him, and for the team, uh, the Flames were were the better club throughout most of the the series. But he was an equalizer, uh, and he matched a guy at, at the other end that is going to be up for the best goaltender in the league this year. And it's it's his first goal round. It's his toes are just in the playoff water here, and it reminds me a little bit of of 2020 when Thatcher Demko actually took over for. Jacob Markstrom in Vancouver and just about beat the Vegas Golden Knights by himself uh, and just not enough offense in game seven for him in that one and it was sort of the same thing with with Jake here uh, but he, he's been the best goaltender in the, the playoffs he's done uh, I've never seen the Conn Smythe trophy get handed out after the first round but if there was ever a case for it it would have been this in his performance against the Flames uh, in game four at home to give him a chance they ultimately lost that one, and then here in, in Game 7 with everything on the line, it, you can't get better goaltending than that. And what, what a wonderful growth hormone for him going forward. Razor, you, you mentioned the growth hormone for him for him going forward. He's 23 years old right now. He's thinking about the loss and, and just the gut-wrenching feeling that, that leaves with him. But what he did in this series and what he did tonight, I know he's an RFA after this year, what is he gonna? What's that gonna do for him moving forward as a goaltender for the Dallas Stars? There's something special about what he just did tonight. He doesn't realize it yet. No, I don't think. Well, there's something special about him. Period. Uh, you know, we we've seen that in in the challenges that have been thrown in his face, and how well he's handled that and and played. And this is just the latest one. It, it started with game one. Nobody un understood whether he could actually get this done or not right and and be a playoff netminder and he was he shuts him out in this building in game two and then you get all the way to game seven and you get that i mean they had a chance to do what they i'm sure they set out to do is as, as debilitated as they were here tonight with some key guys missing they're just playing for one shot and they're, they're riding the performance of jake ottinger so uh, you know going forward I think it's more about the franchise than it is just Jake. I think Jake's always had the confidence in his own ability. I don't think there's been a ton of doubt, and never in a bad way, never in that sort of cocky, I, I own the world, it's all going to fall in my lap. It's just that athletic arrogance. But for the franchise, there are, there are franchises that search for decades to find a goaltender like Jake Ottinger, a guy that can be your guy for a decade, and it's pretty obvious he's the guy. Razor, talk about the ebbs and flows of this season. You know, the Stars start out a little slow in October, have trouble, and then December again, they get hit with some losses. March, they were supposed to get crushed on this big road trip, and they find a way to have a strong month. Uh, this team, back and forth now, it's been four years of this stuff, hasn't it? It has, and part of the problem continues to be just not enough scoring depth. Uh, you know, for the last, what is it now, like half a dozen seasons, they've had one line carry them offensively. Back uh, before the the Hintz, Pavelski, Robertson line, it was Sagan, Ben, and Alexander Radulov. And you see how the, the page gets turned, but it's it's still the same book. And th they, they've got to find a way to, to create more offense underneath their top line so that they're, they're not, you know, relying so heavily on them game in and game out. And uh, look, they were a plucky bunch all season, and they had opportunities within the year where they could have just went away completely and not even been here in a game seven in the opening round. Uh, but they, they, they were a tough team to kill, whether it was within games or just the overall season where they had to get enough points, uh, you know, manufactured in order to get in. And uh, I, I think that's probably the biggest takeaway of, of the season and the biggest need going forward. One is they got a heartbeat in there that's, that's tough to close out. And the other is they just don't have enough offense.
All right, Razor, as always, thanks for sticking around and joining us on the postgame show all season long. We look forward to catching up with you back here in Dallas. Guys, Brian, I wish we could see a full highlight Bravo reel of Jake Ottinger. Bravo to all Ottinger. three of you back there. <laughs>